sunlight and plants, the alchemy of life. The source of energy to power the natural world. And nature uses that energy as efficiently as possible. Every creature has been shaped by natural selection for economy. Every creature except for one. When humans unlock the secret of fire, they unleashed enough energy to free us from natural constraints. Energy that fueled a series of revolutions. The Bronze Age, the Iron Age, the Age of Industry. The Industrial Revolution changed the way we live, producing energy and materials in quantities we never had before. But at what cost to our planet? In recent years, our lives have been transformed by yet another revolution, an information revolution, built on the backs of those that have gone before. Industrial and digital man has grown apart from nature, but now the new science of biomimetics is taking us in a different direction. Understanding the basic principles behind nature's energy and information revolutions offers radical new ways of living our own lives on planet Earth. Every living creature needs energy. And luckily, the world is full of renewable energy sources. Food that comes in a huge variety of shapes and sizes. But the real challenge is to find food without becoming a meal yourself. This ancient battle has driven the evolution of many different ways of refueling, some of them very spectacular. This way of finding energy has attracted the attention of engineers. What if robots could do the same? But we needn't fear for our children and pets just yet. Ecobot can't match skills honed by millions of years of evolution. But it does get its energy in the same way by digesting flies. It can't catch them yet, though the next version will. It has to be fed dead flies, which are digested in a special microbial fuel cell. This uses chemical energy, driven by bacteria decomposing the fly, to produce a trickle of electricity. But even after a hearty meal of flies, it doesn't produce much electricity. Ecobot has to sit for several minutes digesting its meal before it's stored enough energy to move a couple of centimeters. And that's it. Until it's digested a bit more fly. But the system does work. Ecobot has been programmed to move towards a light source and to take a few test measurements on the way. Over 20 minutes or so, 
it covers a couple of meters, all on nothing more than a lunch of flies. In ecological terms, Ecobot is a predator. But nature's food chain starts much lower down. And it's here that bio-inspired thinking might hold the key, not just to self-refueling robots, but to how we make and use energy. A whole new future for humanity. Ultimately, the energy budget of the natural world depends on plants or bacteria. The raw fuel is sunlight, and every leaf or blade of grass is busy converting this to high-energy sugars or carbohydrates that feed the rest of the world. These are nature's power plants. Our planet is run on photosynthesis. Photosynthesis even fueled the growth of civilization. The Industrial Revolution was built on the dead remains of plants, buried and transformed into coal. These plants trapped the energy of the sun, beating down on the Earth hundreds of millions of years ago. When humans mastered fire, they could unlock that ancient energy by burning. But the cost is to gradually fill our atmosphere with carbon dioxide. Even today, most of our energy, powering our ultra-modern, computerized lifestyles, comes from this crude process of setting fire to prehistoric plants. Nature suggests there are other ways. Like leaves, solar panels make energy from sunlight. And nature can help make our designs more efficient. For maximum efficiency, a solar panel needs to absorb as much light as possible. And that's also a problem faced by animals that need to see in low light levels. Evolution has designed eyes that can see in light levels in which we are blind. Moth eyes absorb every last scrap of light to help them navigate through the night sky. And they do this by having an anti-reflective coating on the outside of their eyes. Magnified over 25,000 times, the surface of the eye is covered in tiny, precisely spaced bumps that stop light bouncing off, and so increase how much is absorbed. It only works because of the exact spacing of the micro bumps. An incredible example of natural nanotechnology. Now, modern technology can match nature's achievement and produce a similar micro surface. Trademarked under the name Moth Eye, these structures are so small and so precisely arranged that the Fraunhofer Institute in Freiburg had to develop new manufacturing techniques to work at this scale. A light-sensitive coating on a sheet of glass has been exposed to a precise holographic pattern of laser light. When the coating is washed off, the areas fixed by the light pattern are left, forming a surface covered in micro-bumps that work in exactly the way a moth's eye does. Because they absorb almost all light falling on them, very little remains to be reflected. The difference is remarkable. Half of this monitor is covered in a conventional surface, the other half with moth eye. Looking straight onto the surface, there's not much difference. But at an angle, the moth eye surface on the right cuts out all the glare. 
Moth-eye technology will also work on solar panels, increasing the amount of light absorbed and making them more efficient. And this green technology can be made even more efficient by mimicking another idea from nature. Arctic poppies have to grow their seeds during the short Arctic summer. So their flowers track the sun, like miniature radar dishes, keeping their developing seeds as warm as possible. The designers of the Gemini house in Austria have borrowed this idea. The solar panels on the house rotate to follow the sun. We might call this green technology, but it doesn't work in quite the same way that leaves do. Solar panels are much more efficient than leaves, but they're very expensive to make. Nature's solution is to make inefficient but cheap power plants and then put them everywhere. So what could the power industries of the future learn from this? Solar panels make electricity while leaves make chemicals. How they do this is still something of a mystery, but the leaf's alchemy is slowly being unraveled. Inside an individual leaf cell are tiny green capsules called chloroplasts. And inside each of these are stacks of membranes. It's the chemical machinery attached to these membranes that holds the secret to photosynthesis. Light kicks an electron out of a chemical called chlorophyll, the stuff that makes leaves green, and sets off a chain reaction that ends with water being split into hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen is released into the atmosphere and the hydrogen is fused to carbon dioxide to make a simple sugar. But this mechanism is so complicated that a scientist could spend a whole career on just one step in the process. But in the last few years, they've succeeded in making an artificial leaf, or at least mimicking chloroplasts with tiny man-made structures which can make high energy chemicals from sunlight. If this is a vision of the future, how would we use it? One thing artificial leaves could do is generate hydrogen, the ultimate clean fuel. In reality, the whole planet, humanity included, is already fueled by hydrogen. We are in orbit around a massive nuclear fusion generator. Deep in the sun, hydrogen atoms are fused together to form helium, and in the process, release vast amounts of energy. The ultimate power source for life on Earth. We've tried to mimic this process, but so far we've made very little progress towards building our own nuclear fusion reactors. But a hydrogen economy could still bring a bright future. Just as with our present hydrocarbon fuels, we already burn hydrogen. It's highly flammable. It's how we fuel our trips into space. Now, engineers have developed car engines that can also burn hydrogen. 
This car is a hybrid that can burn ordinary gasoline or, at the flick of a switch, 